Hey, this is Rob Unspock, and welcome back to another edition of E-Heroes. For those keeping track, this is episode 242. And my next guest, we're going to talk about storytelling at its best and our love and hate relationship with grammar. So I want to welcome Sean O'Neill uh, to, the, to the podcast, and, and thanks for being here. You're up, in, you're up in Canada, and I'm down here in good old USA, and... But you know what? When you talk about stories, you know they're they're everywhere. Stories is a worldwide event, <laughs> um, and it touches all of us, and it touches us in our own particular ways, doesn't it? Oh, it does. And and uh, you know, I love storytelling. Um, you know, I, I, this is basically the whole podcast is. You know, I, I've shared storytelling from from episode one all the way to now. Uh, over the last five years, uh, I mentioned storytelling in a lot of my books. But, you know, I, I've gone to your website. I've gone and I looked at pictures. I've looked at your books. I've looked at your films. And and, and you've kind of taken storytelling to a different level. And well, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I am Irish, obviously, by background. No, and, and no. you know, the, <laughs> yeah, I don't look at either, do I? <laughs> um, the, the you know the, the tradition of the the dinner table um, was storytelling. Uh, so I I mean I grew up surrounded by it. I grew up with the concept of you know ha, you know the, the passing of a story from generation to generation. And my father was he was a big storyteller. So you know we'd sit at the table, we'd listen to the tales of the of the old country or the, you know the old legends and so on. And um, it's hard for it not to kind of rub off on you. So, you know, from a young age, I just mimic the same thing. And I, you know, I, I've been told that I'm a classic tall tale tailor. Um, and I, I, I'm okay with that. I, I think stories are a lot of what makes this world go around, what makes, you know, enjoyable parts of this, yeah. of our life. So uh, I, I take it to another level. I, I, I have, um, I learned, I learned the process of uh, taking the telling of stories um, to a printed format or to an electronic format. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, it didn't happen overnight, but through the now for my 14th novel coming out, I think I've gotten pretty good at it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and, I, and I melded that in the last couple of years um, to taking it now from electronic format and moving it to a visual format. So screenwriting, um, I've now adapted seven of my novels to uh, screenplays, uh, and I'm in the process of producing the first feature film. Um, we're hoping to have good news on the greenlit front over the next month or so, um, and we'll see. We'll see what are my stories that started up here, um, came to here, <laughs> and then ended up in electronic format. Now I'm and hopefully soon to be visual format, where you know, hopefully millions will enjoy seeing seeing a story playing out from concept to uh, visual delivery. Yeah, you know, it only took me uh, 10 years to finally get a, a rhythm going with my Rob versus books. And I've written books on social media, on podcasting, on SEO, on life lessons. And, and um, you know, the, the, the Rob versus books are just micro stories of my adventures dealing with scammers and lousy customer service and and um so now we're working on on scripts uh to to sell to studios and 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 for me that's a whole different ball game you know it is and and so you got these stories but then you start writing them in a script form and you don't have to put down the the the, the background, you just say night or you say day and you say, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. that's just driving me nuts. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, so it's, 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 for me, it's, it's, it's an elevated form of storytelling, but now the producer is, is sharing their idea of how your story is supposed to progress. And, well, uh, and, and that's the process I'm, I'm about to go into. I, I transitioned from novel to script quite easily. Oddly enough, I've heard, that it isn't always that easy. I, I, I helped myself by going to back to school, um, you know, MBA background, now doing film school. Um, but I will tell you, I learned a lot by doing it. And I took the screenwriting courses in particular 
um, were very, very handy for me. So it helped me transition the mindset of, you know, you're, you're sort of describing the story from above um, and, and you're able to get into people's heads. You're able to um, play a background, a little bit of a background theme and then jump ahead to today. Where in, in the, on the on the script side, um, you're visually describing things. And it, there is a mindset change. There, there really is. Uh, and, and I will say, I, I, I still go back and forth. Like right now I'm, I'm working on um, a, a book called Jill with a co-writer. Um, it's first time I'm venturing into the world of uh, uh, erotic <laughs> wow. books. Now, it's, it's not, the, the erotic piece is not, for me, not the, the, the heart of the story. The heart of the story is this very interesting um, time and place, 1953, Tokyo, Japan. A six foot tall, bald albino actress from America makes it big. In American uh, Japanese remakes of American classic films, silent remakes of American classic films. It's a bit of a twisted story. Um, so I'm writing that at the same time as uh, we're producing the Chosen. So I'm going back and doing edits on the script for the Chosen. So one day I might actually be writing a novel in the morning, and in the afternoon I'm editing a script. Right. So you got to compartmentalize the brain a little bit, flip back and forth. Oh yeah, I can't see that here. <laughs> But you know what? It's entertaining as all hell, and I really enjoy the uh, I enjoy the challenges of of both because they're both unique in their way of storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the funny thing is, I I think a lot of I think a lot of um, writers early on uh, kind of get uh, crutched. Uh, you know, the teachers say, "Well, you can't write like that," and early yeah. on. You know, when I was in, in, in uh, grade school, not grade school, high school, my favorite author was Tom Clancy. My favorite book at the time was Red Storm Rising. And I started to mirror how he wrote his style. And I started writing like that. And the teacher's like, you can't write like that. I'm like, why not? Tom Clancy writes like that. Oh, but he's yeah. famous. Okay. But why can't I write like and, and every excuse the teacher, you have to do it proper. You got to do this. You got to learn how to get to that level. I said, well, I don't want to learn all the other crap because that doesn't work for me. This, and, and But the thing is, now that I write, now that I've been doing this for a long time, everything that I write about is more of a conversational tone. So when a reader jumps in, they yep. feel like they're interacting with me and not yeah. a character. And I, uh, I get I get very similar commentary about my writing, my novel writing, is people say it's very conversational. And, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not even 100% sure what that means. <laughs> but it, it to, to your point, it, it, they say they feel involved in the story. Mm -hmm. um, and they find it easy to follow um, because they're actually following along as part of the story. Yeah. So whatever the term means in my books, it's good. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it's... Uh... Although then, then you have, yeah, and we talked about this uh, 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 off air, and and I've I've shared this um, with in other episodes is that I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, they they love the book. They, they they'll say, hey, that this is a great book, but there was errors in it. Mm. I'm like, who cares? Are, are you going to fix them? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I'm not going back. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and I, I have one of my books, uh, Lessons from the Dojo. There's a couple errors still in there, and the book's been out since 2015. And yes, I could probably upload a new edition, um, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> so it's out there. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I face the same things, it, you know, I, and, and as we talked about off air, um, you know, jumping in, having been a corporate guy forever, and uh, walking away from it um to become a writer which was not well received <laughs> um y there's a lot that you need to learn and and you know i i think i focus on the story because to me the story is what's important um and, and like you i you know my early books in particular they had errors um i've gone back i've had them re-edited like crazy and fixed it all but i i was concerned that i was telling a great story and if there was a couple errors along the way my thought was, okay, you go, oops, there's an error, but I like the story and I'm still going along with it. 
So yeah, I, I tend to agree with that mindset. Um, and as we talked about also earlier, the beauty of self-publishing is I find an error, it's fixed by that night, right? I don't have to go through this whole rigmarole of having the editors re-edit and republish and so on. So, you know, I'm I'm hours from oops, there was a mistake to fixed. Yeah. Um, and it's it's taking advantage of today's technology, really. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah, I was a technology guy before. I appreciate the technology in what we're doing today. You know, and and uh, as we're you know as we're speaking, I'm also launching a, a another book for a, a client that I helped, and he's helping me, and it's called Navigating Hollywood. And uh, it's all about how writers, producers, directors, and actors can can uh, improve by kind of thinking creatively. And, and, you know, here we are in the U.S., and when we think about filming, we always think of Hollywood. The problem yeah. is that films today rarely get filmed in Hollywood anymore. They're up in Vancouver. They're in North Carolina. They're Toronto. They're, they're overseas. Yeah. They're everywhere. Uh, and, I, and I think Hollywood right now is just, you know, a name. It's not really a location anymore. Um, but, you know, all my favorite shows are filmed in Canada. And and I, well, I think I think for you guys right now, that's the advantage. I mean, you can write and and, and get it to, to uh, film quicker. Well, it, certainly here in Toronto, and, and you mentioned Vancouver as well, uh, just about every big city, you know, you put Montreal in there, you can put uh, Calgary, um, uh, The Last of Us was filmed in the Calgary region. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Every major city in Canada has built up its its film business. Toronto is still number one. Um, so I have the advantage. I just I may not happen to live here, right? So I have the advantage of access to you know you've got an actors base. You got all the systems and support mechanisms around film. You got studios. You you, you got access to everything. We also have you know I I know this fresh because it's in my pitch deck. I don't know pitch it all the time now. We also have a dollar that's uh, way cheaper than yours. Right. And um, for now, uh, you know, we Canadians typically personally don't like it that way, but it, it's an advantage from a cost perspective. Uh, and we have a terrific tax credit system here um, when it comes to uh, filming in Canada. So this particular film, The Chosen, um, you know, we've, we've ta we're taking advantage of all those aspects to make an efficient uh, process of, of creating, a, you know, a feature film. Um, we're not in production yet. But fingers crossed, we will be seeing all that happen over the next couple of few months. Well, let's talk about The Chosen. How'd that come about? Well, it started as a novel. It's funny. I, I get, often get asked, where do you get the ideas from? And I sort of side story. Um, I, I'd always felt I was kind of different. Um, I, I was. Uh, and from a creativity <laughs> perspective, <laughs> yeah, you got to admit it at some point in your life. <laughs> um, so when when both my daughters uh, were diagnosed as Asperger's, um, they looked at, mm -hmm. yeah, well, there you go, right here. So they looked at my wife and I and said, well, one of you is, <laughs> and it wasn't my wife. So there, that brain comes with this incredible creativity capability. Um, so these, these, I always have thoughts of, you know, another story or another movie or another book or whatever it may be. And often they come in dreams. So this one came in a dream, um, wrote it down the next morning. And it was this uh, concept of this sort of a dark Irish tale. Um, because I, I've gone into this sort of Irish phase now of mm -hmm. exploring Irish stories. And so I have another one coming soon too called uh, Galway Banshee. Um, so it started as a novel, kind of a deep, dark psychological horror story. Uh, and I figured I was I was do doing the screenwriting uh, at that point. I thought, hey, this would probably translate well to a script, a screenplay. So I did it. And then I started sort of talking to people about it. And I had actors start to call me. And I had a director call me. Um, and the next thing you know, I've got a team together. We've got the script done. I put the script into a bunch of film festivals, one, three of them, in two months. Um, and I figured, you know, we got something going here. So let's continue down the path. So we've done the whole um, pre-production stuff. We've got budgets, shooting plans, schedules. I've got six actors uh, LOI'd in, um, pending funding. Uh, we have an agreement with Mickey Work. 
uh, to wow. appear in the film. He's, he's got nine minutes in the film. And we're working on another a Irish A-lister actor right now. So we've uh, we're, we've now officially partnered with uh, Buffalo Eight Bondit, um, and they're going to represent us on the um, uh, investors and distributors side and helping us bring in that last A actor, A list actor. So you know, two point three million, two point four million dollar budget, uh, manageable, um, award winning script, some pretty big names. We have Greg Brick from Canada as well. He's a Canadian A lister. Um, we've got. Uh, a great um, sound uh, music guy who's come in. Uh, he's going to do soundtrack. So it, it seems to me we've done, we've got everything kind of packed up well. Um, but this is my first time through the cycle. So I don't know what I don't know yet. Um, so we're bringing in a Canadian EP as well. Uh, and the idea is that, he, that I've carried it to this point. Um, he will be able to hopefully then carry it to the next point in conjunction with uh, Buffalo 8. Uh, we also have Keith Mason, who's the lead, um, and he's a former uh, well-known international rugby star. Uh, and he's just coming off his first lead in a movie called Imperative. So he's jumping from that role to this role, very similar roles, which is how we got connected up. So mm -hmm. it just, you know, steady... <laughs> Steady force is the best, right. uh, best way I can describe it, right? Is just being a, a bit of a pit, pit bull um, and, and continuing to chase making something happen. Now, you talked, it, about, it, you talked about sound. Um, and, and uh, you know, when we, when we think about film, sound, uh, the soundtrack, the, the, the sound effects all play within that story. And yes. Yeah. And, sure. and you know, one of my favorite films is Highlander, with a soundtrack uh, produced by Queen. Oh, Queen, and, yes. And uh, I think if that soundtrack wasn't there, if if that music wasn't there, that movie would have sucked. <laughs> I'm just saying, it just well, wasn't you, a, you, you you bang on, and it's it's interesting because the the director, so Fraser Thomas is the director uh, here in, in Toronto. Um, and he, he came to me and he said, look, one of the things we need to invest in, in this is sound. Mm -hmm. And and I hadn't stopped to really think about that. You, you, to your point, you just, you enjoy it or you don't enjoy it mm -hmm. in a movie. And, and yeah, I think Highland is a terrific example of the soundtrack really making the film, helping to make the film. So we, we've invested in, we found a, a top sound engineer that he's worked with in the past and we've signed him on. And we have um, Richie Carter, who's, uh, I believe he's, he's won an Emmy, and, and he's, we've signed him on. So we've put money on the sound side, uh, probably more than a typical indie film would. And we've identified seven songs, and I've gone to, uh, you know, somebody on the music side for licensing. And we've, we've identified the songs, and we priced them out, and they're all in the budget as well. And they're, you know, traditional Irish songs. There's going to be Irish music in the background. And you've got you know, a little bit of you too. You've got some Thin Lizzy. So the idea is that it plays on the nostalgic component of the story. So because it takes place in uh, first part takes place in 1972, second part is 1992. So it's bringing that Irish based background music in to those segments of the film. And to your point, yes, sound. Uh, and and ever since that conversation. He'll send me clips of movies and say, "Listen to the sound, listen to the sound," and and, and I do, and I realize, Jesus Christ, it has such influence on the, the receivability or the watchability or the enjoyability of the film. And I will note one last thing: uh, he sent me one that there's no sound that makes it interesting is "No Country for Old Men." Mm -hmm. So that's a, a play on the opposite side of it. it. There's no music track. It's it's the sound though is is so enhanced the footsteps the gun clicking like all that part of it too so it's it is a mix it's a mix of mm -hmm. music background and then the actual action that's happening and the sound related to the action right. it, I, i've learned a lot from that perspective no oh, you know like jaws the, the the dun 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 um you you can't watch a a shark film now and not think about you know jaws so i, I or I if you hear that three you yeah. hear that three beats but the first thing you think is, I got to get out of the water. <laughs> That's right. And and Jumanji with the drums and and 
So a lot yeah. of those, a lot of the sound does uh, enhance the story, but I, I think also times visuals. Uh, visuals really enhance the the, the story along uh, a book cover. You know, this is just one of my uh, Rob versus books, um, and you know, I, I the first one had basically the Rob versus a scammer is just a guy in a mask. It was okay. I mean, it, it you thought okay, this guy's going to scam me, but every book after that has become the cover has become more ridiculous and it's like, <laughs> you know people are like well rob what's the eighth cover or the ninth cover going to be i'm like <laughs> so it, it, it's it's i you know you might, I, you might have to go 3d <laughs> right right so it, it's everything that we do enhances the story that's going to happen or unfold within a film or in a book yes or wh whatever we're going for and 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 I, and I also think that the, the, the story affects the audience. You know, are we yeah. writing for a general audience? Are we writing for a, uh, you know, rom-com? Are we writing, whatever we're writing for has to relate to the audience. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, from my perspective, I started writing um, my own stories. Uh, so I don't think I've, I know I've never, written particular to i didn't i'm not writing for a mass market i'm not trying to create something that i hope everybody loves i'm telling my stories because i i think if i try to change that process or change that mindset that the stories are not going to be as, as nice. they won't be mine they won't it won't be me telling the story so uh, there's that balance right they I, i'm going to tell a damn good story and you know hopefully people enjoy it as opposed to um, I'm going to craft a story that I think the market is looking for today. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a lot of screenwriters that are crafting stories they think the market's going to like today. I just, I can't do that. Yeah, and, <laughs> so and I, I think there's a there's a big difference right now in, in U.S. writing versus Canadian versus overseas. And, and, and some, I don't know why, but somewhere in the U.S. market, someone says, we have to whitewash that story. We have to make it more woke. We have to... And I'm like, no, I'm going to write how I feel like writing. And yeah. you guys up in Canada are like, what the hell are you guys doing in the U.S.? You guys? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, that, my biggest fear is that I hand over what I think is a good sto story and a script, and it gets slashed all over, which is why I really wanted to keep a hand in the process for this one, you know, my first, so that I could tell the story that was meant to be told. Mm -hmm. Um Again, financiers and investors, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if they agree with that or not. Oh, yeah. Um, when we talk about financiers, I mean, uh, George Lucas, he had a particular vision for Star Wars, um, but he ran out of money. And so the yeah. part with Jabba the Hutt kind of got kicked out. Uh, and then he went back after the success of, of Empire and went back and, uh, or a Jedi, and went back and, and redid the episode. Uh, Four, which is a new hope and put more graphics and put more this and put more and people are like well now it's dumb so you know sometimes we have this vision we have this thing we want to put it out there stick to it you know but, yeah yeah there's, you know your integrity right um how much are you willing to change for it to sell I, yeah. I, and and i haven't had that challenge yet so i don't know where that line is you know if somebody came to me and said okay we love the shows and we want to fund it um but i need you to change these three characters okay i, I don't know i don't know what my reaction would be yet. Yeah. It, it would depend on the nature of the change and how much change there is right. i guess we're fine well, you know, and i you know i figure hey you know what how much you want to pay me to change all that yeah yeah the, i mean that's part of the question i mean certainly there's a financial aspect to what we do um I'm a later, I'm kind of a little later stage in life after a very successful corporate career. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not jumping at dollars. I really want to make this, um, it's a life goal and, and it's it's a big one. <laughs> uh, and I want to make it um, to feel that I've been successful at achieving this this major goal uh, mm -hmm. in life. You know, when, and I, it's fun, it's fun. I, I, have, I have people that know me from my past lives, not literally my past work lives um you know when i owned a carpet cleaning business when i owned a video photography business and and they're like 
what you write books now you're what <laughs> yeah 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 rob you sucked at english what are you doing right <laughs> yeah they just can't believe well, there's, this whole thing <laughs> there's english and then there's storytelling <laughs> uh, no they don't necessarily have to go together <laughs> no i you know and the thing is is that i stopped listening to people that don't care anymore i don't know if they don't care it's just they want to complain about everything and yeah and, and you know i i don't even go there are people that all they do is is go to amazon and put negative negative <laughs> yeah i know i don't care <laughs> i know I'm like i get some plastics <laughs> yeah it, it's it's uh you know rob you could have wrote your book better whatever i this oh, is how i, I wrote get, it I get I get some classics. I had one where a woman commenting on one of my books. It, it's an apocalyptic story, kind of a romantic apocalyptic story, a combo. Um, and she writes, my husband read the book. <laughs> uh, and he thought it was okay, but he prefers science fiction. <laughs> but at least she gave you a three star, not a one. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the world we live in, right? Yeah. So how did have this <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. I, I think that's exactly what we have to have. Uh, you know, and not to say that we have to be like Shrek and and peel back the onions of our of our thick skin. It's just, it is what it is. It, it, you you got to stop thinking about what other people think of you and 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 just proceed and and move forward. And I I know so many people who, you know, they'll get a hundred great reviews, but only dwell on that one negative and and. You know they freeze up and they don't want to do it. I'm like, what are you? What are you doing? I mean, yeah, yeah. It just so, look at the positive. Yeah. So I mean, uh, I didn't. I, I don't have an MBA, uh, so I don't know uh, that transition from going from, you know, having a structured thinking to being a book writer. But I'm sure well, that how you do it is probably similar to how I did it. I just started writing. That's exactly what I did. It's it's funny. I, I as I look at the two stages of my life from a professional perspective, um, I think this is what I really am. Mm -hmm. I think I was shoehorned myself into my previous career, and I think I followed all of those objectives and goals um, to satisfy the world around me, not myself. Uh, I did it well because I was able to contain it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I always had the creativity in me. So, you know, even in the corporate world, I was the guy who was coming up with new ways of doing things or inventive ways of matter, working with customers and stuff like that. That's where I got my thrill from. It was always there. It was just sort of hidden under, uh, you know, a suit and, uh, and, and tie. Um, and I, it, it took, took me years to realize that it wasn't who I am. Um, so I'm glad I've had this opportunity. I'm glad I took the risk. Uh, it may have not worked out, right? Um, but in either case, you know, I would have tried it. I would, would have been able to say, yes, I, I, I gave it my best. Um, but it has worked out. And, and I'm glad I've done it. And it's left me um, in a place, you know, a little later in life now that um, is, is a happy one. Because I'm doing what's me, right? And I got, I got, you know, 50 more stories to tell. I just could only type so fast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have I have so many stories, and I write them down every day. And then if I have to, I piece them together. Um, you know, it, it, it's but you know, I'm also helping my clients. I'm doing this and doing that. Yeah. And, and people are like, "Well, Rob, how do you have time to do all this stuff?" I just find time. I, yeah. I think if you yeah. want to, if you want to share your stories with people, if you want to be, I'm not saying be famous, but or infamous, you gotta you gotta find time to share your stories. I, I love what when somebody says to me, you know what, I can't put your book down. I mean, that, that's enough to keep me going anytime. Uh, and, and you know, I hear that enough to keep me going. <laughs> so aside um, from I'm, that, I'm, I'm actually that. looking at your, your website and you're behind, or the, the pyramids are behind you. Is that the Valley of the King? Oh, yeah. yeah, so so I that was uh, immediately after leaving corporate. I went to Africa for two months. You know, everybody goes to find themselves, right? Um, and, and that's where the concept of writing came up. But yeah, I spent 
I spent time coming all the way down. I started in, in Cairo and I worked all the way way down to uh, Cape Town. Um, and and I on my website I post a lot of the pictures, you know, the different adventures that I've been on. So if if there's anything else that I am in life, it's an adventurer. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think the writing and the adventure, you know, the Ernest Hemingway lot, right? I like to be like a little Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, I was just in his house, his old home uh, in Key West about a month ago. Nice. I was a very nice experience for me because I'm a fan of, of him. It was a terrific experience to get in there and just walk around. And it's seeing it, but seeing it and thinking of his books, right? Because I've read a bunch of his books and thinking about how the stories are created. So, yes. Uh, there's a, there's certainly an adventure in me. My best writing is sitting on a train somewhere else in the world. For whatever reason, that movement, that being on a train, the adventure, being you know in an exotic country, um, the stuff just pumps out. Yeah, we we took the auto train from uh, Virginia all the way down to Florida. Uh, it's an overnight train. It was pretty neat, and and um, you know, but I'm on there thinking. How do people deal with taking trains all over the world and doing this? This would drive me nuts. If I mean, because I like to just get there. I get, hop yeah. on a plane and go. And um, that, but, you know, that's what know, most people. Yeah, and, and I don't know if you've ever been to Disney World, but inside Animal Kingdom, there's an old train. Oh you yeah, sit, you been sit on sideways, it. and it goes all the way up to I think Rafiki's, whatever it is. But that train. It's kind of cool because you, you, your your vision is only seeing one thing, but you're sitting a different way, and and it, to me it's like wow, that this takes you back to like the forties and fifties. Well, I took the Rovos train in Africa from uh, Victoria Falls to uh, South Africa, mm -hmm. so it's uh, three nights, uh, and it's an old school like the. Um, uh, what is the uh, the one in, in Europe? It's, it's an old school classic, classy train. Uh, and you have your own room and there's a bar at the back with some glove, white glove service. <laughs> and a little bit much for me, but uh, you know, you're sitting out on the back balcony every afternoon with people from all over the world as the Serengeti's rolling by. you. And I can tell you that gets, that gets the thinking creative process going. That was one of the most... Um, Amazing experiences of my life, I will say. So how do people get a hold of you? Uh, well, uh, my website is probably a good starting point. Um, and the other place, books-wise, I'm on, uh, I, have, I have all my books on Amazon. Um, I'm in a few bookstores here and there, but nothing broad. Um, so yeah, probably the website is a good starting point. Uh, I, I ha As you've seen, I have a lot of stuff up there, a little bit more than just the books. I like to have some stories in the background and adventure pictures <laughs> and so on. Uh, and it links to the movie side as well. So I have, I, 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 uh, I run uh, sensory films, which is a boutique uh, film company up here in Canada boutique, but hopefully growing <laughs> with this latest, um, the chosen uh, project. So yeah, the website's probably the best. Place to start. And then the website is uh, Sean dash O'Neill dash writer.com. That's it. You got it. And Sean, the old traditional Irish way, S E A L, like like Mr. Connery. <laughs> Sean Connery. Yeah, I mean, uh, he was a classical trained actor, but uh, he did he did a lot of ad lib too stuff. And and uh, oh, he, he did, <laughs> especially yeah, in the Bond films. But um, you know, is, is there anything that you want to uh, leave the audience and and uh, any inspirational words or? Well, the the biggest I get a lot of. Um, I get a lot of people contacting me uh, because I made the transition. Um, and there's a lot of people out there that, you know, wonder, it, it, you know, could I do it? Could I do it? I, I think you don't know until you try. Um, but what I will say is make sure that the try is set up for success in the sense that, you know, you, you're, you're not worried about paying bills. And that, that's, you know, it's easy for me to say, and a lot of people say, well, it's easy for you to say, um, but there are ways of setting up an environment so that, you know, you've, you've got, let's say you need to work 20 hours a week and the rest of the time is writing. If you manage that, you're paying your bills, that time is set aside and you can dedicate it to writing. Um, if you're going to jump into the writing world, take a creative writing course. I did. And it really helped understand the structure of things. Um, and then, you know, 
realize that your first product is not going to be that good. <laughs> it's going to take a few iterations before you get there. Um, but stick at it, right? Um, don't give up because the first product isn't that great. And get to the end. Uh, a lot of people start writing, start writing, they go, oh, done writing. Um, get to the end, finish the product, and, and let the world um, determine whether it's a good product or not. What, what I do now is it's friends and family first, as, as you do. You know, uh, and, I, it's, and, and I've shared this story before. My my uh, very first Rob versus book, Rob versus the Scammers, I sent it out to a bunch of friends to get their uh, opinion before I you know, pulled the trigger and made it live. And and I mean, I had written books before then, but this was totally different. This was very sarcastic. It was, you know, all humor and, and but it also taught lessons. And and 99% uh, of the people loved it. Yeah. The, so the, you one, know you're on the, right track. the one person I thought was going to love it um, said, but Rob, this is just a collection of stories. I don't get it. <laughs> and I'm like, you not your target market. market. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I, you know, and this person's very sarcastic, and I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm going full. I, I, I published it, got it out there. People loved it, and um, this person comes back and posing with my book, and he says, "Oh, it's a great book." <laughs> I'm like, you dumb. You <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but you know, it, it, funny thing is, is that every every book since then. Uh, he's posed with the book. He's he's told people about it, loved it, um, and and so, you know, I I I I'm not saying he was a hater at first, but I think he needed to be convinced that what I was doing was different, stood out, people loved it, and you know, I'm not much for sequels, but there was a demand for it. I just didn't want to say Rob versus the scammers one, two, three, four, five. So I gave yeah. them all different yeah. names. So it was Rob versus yeah. the morons, Rob versus humanity, Rob versus the entitled. And, and it just went on and on and on. And, and, uh, you know, the, the, I like the, I like that concept though, uh, the verses, but I like the fact that you're sort of, you know, going after all of the spectrum. Of the yeah. And the, the, the last one that just came out was Rob versus the yahoos. And, and um, so they, 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 each one has a very similar uh, scope to it. And because I'm, I'm battling these, these uh, nefarious people, whether it be scammers or whatnot. And, and it's just my sarcastic take. And, and sometimes I just keep them on the phone forever. And, and, and that conversation just becomes so funny because usually by the end of the thing, they're like, F you, Rob. <laughs> I know. Ah, that's funny you know I like it, it's just like... um but each one at the end of every at the end of, of me sharing a story i always give it like a little life lesson blurb you know why i did this you know how entrepreneurs can proceed um and uh you know i, I what my goal is is every entrepreneur out there uh, whether you're a writer, whether you're a filmmaker, whether you're whatever you do, you do it on your terms. You mm -hmm. know, don't, yeah, don't, that's agreed. don't copy someone else. Don't think, hey, oh, the grass is always greener over there. Uh, no, because usually they probably piled shit on it to make it greener. Exactly. You have, <laughs> you have to create your own style, your own way of doing things. And if people like it, great. If they don't, it doesn't matter. Just keep moving yeah. forward. Yeah, there'll be, it's a big world, right? There'll be, if what you're doing is good, there'll be enough people to, oh, yeah. to follow. Yeah. And, and I don't even, I don't even think about people as competitors anymore because the world is so huge. There's so much opportunity oh, yeah. out there. I find sometimes it's better to collaborate than it is to try to compete. Uh, agreed. And you get more out of that. I, I do, I'm, I'm doing my first uh, co-write um, with this book, Jill. And um, she, she's a wonderful, absolutely wonderful writer. She's a better writer than I am. I will admit that. <laughs> um, but she doesn't really do fiction. So this is an opportunity for her to come into fiction. So here's a partnership that works. You can write erotic scenes. I write the structure of the book, the real story of the book. So I'm the storyteller. She's, she writes, you know, things that she's good at writing. Mm -hmm. um, and she gets a fiction experience. So 
uh, there you go. Two people yeah. working together. To oh, and, then, and the thing is, you guys have, have figured out what your strengths and weaknesses are. And, yeah, and so exactly. you know, it works. It works so much better that way. You know, it does. Absolutely. You know, sometimes one person can't write a TV show. They can't write a movie. They got to have multiple people in there to write the different characters. Um, you know, I, I, if I wrote everybody's character, they'd all be sarcastic. Yeah, that's right. You need the balance, right? right. You need to have the serious of somebody over here. So I, I think when people are thinking about storytelling, yeah, there are stories that we can share individually. Uh, but when we're trying to put a story together, we, we can't always narrate every other character that's there. We need help. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be honest. It's it's a bit of a lesson I'm learning um, about sharing the load. Um, there are so many advantages to doing it, but you know, to your point, it's finding what your strengths and weaknesses and making sure you're fitting together in the right manner. Right? You don't have two square blocks. You got to round in a square type of thing. You know, and and just like this, a guy from the U.S. and a guy from Canada can come together and be on a podcast. There you go. Yeah, and actually enjoy it. <laughs> That's right. No, I, I work with I work with Canadians all the time. Uh, two of my teammates are in Winnipeg, uh, so. Oh God! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the Winnipeg. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to live there though. It's always snowing. Nope. I mean, it'd be it'd be hundred degrees here in July, and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, it's snowing again. <laughs> it Why? can't snow in July. Move. <laughs> and in January, it's not uncommon to get temperatures around minus forty. <laughs> Yeah, screw that. I, I don't. I don't know. How they, you know, I'm Canadian. I don't know how they live there. <laughs> so this was great. I want to thank you for being on the show, and and everybody else. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Adios. Thank you.